Okay, let's go to Exodus. And we're going to start at the 24th chapter. Uh, I guess we could take five verses each and we'll go into the 25th chapter. Okay? So what, what we're reading is, uh, what we're reading is according to the covenant that was given to us coming out of Israel. After that, uh, we had a few questions that we, we were going to ask a few brothers and and a few of the sisters just to make sure they're up on some of the studies. So I guess we'll do that right afterwards and uh, see what we get from that. You ready? Ava, you ready? We've got some questions for you too. And then after that, um, we're going to go into the lesson to show that according to scriptures, and I'm going to bring this out, that even that accord, according to scriptures, um, there will be a flood that's going to take out the majority of New York. I seen it this morning, and it, it's clear what's going to happen, and it's in the Bible. All right, maybe I need to do that first, huh? <laughs> All right, but uh, let's start off with Exodus, the 24th chapter, just so each man, 12 and over, can read out of the law. And for those who don't understand, 12 and over read out of the law. This is what we did every uh, Sabbath in, in the synagogues. So when you see Christ contending in the temple since the age of 12, and how he went and discoursed with the Pharisees on the Sabbath. This is what they did on the Sabbath day. They would read out the law. All right. Um, you can start off, lawyer. Yeah. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Most High Ahiah, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone came shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Most High Ahiah, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Most High Ahiah said, we will, will we do. Verse 4, And Moses wrote all the words of the Most High Ahiah, and rose up early in the morning, and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Most High Ahia. Now this is what happened when we went into the wilderness. It so happened that the twelve pillars that our people built in Exodus the 24th chapter are actually in the same location today. So we're going to go and behold those twelve pillars in the midst of the last war but everything is still the same what we read it's still set up there's gates around it that's protecting it maybe the most high put a spirit on the Saudis to to keep it from the Western world I don't know but I know that they, they haven't touched it all right I'm gonna read from 6 to 10 and Moses took half of the blood and put it in a basin and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Most High have said will we do, and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Most High have made with you concerning all these words. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nabat and, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And they saw the power, the God of Israel. And there, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Go ahead. Mark. <clears throat> Verse 11. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. 
also they saw the Most High and did eat and drink. And the Most High said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of the Most High. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and the cloud covered the mount. As you notice before the next reader reads, as you notice, <clears throat> it tells you that Joshua was the minister. Okay, so a lot of what the what the Most High delivered to Moses, Joshua would deliver to the people. You understand? Now, also, if you notice, Joshua name is spelt the exact way that the that the Khazars or what you would call the Jewish uh, powers pronounce Christ's name. Mm -hmm. Now they did this on purpose, also in their records, so that they could totally reject the name of the Most High and reject Christ. They rather give the credit of anything to Joshua and those of the Old Testament opposed to Christ. So that was a purpose effort, effort to call the Savior Joshua. They did that on purpose. The Masoretes did this so that we would not call on the name of our Savior. The only name where, whereby man can be saved. Was another doctor that was saying Joshua was reincarnated as Christ. I heard that from Somebody in Houston told you that Christ was reincarnated from Joshua. Yeah, Joshua was reincarnated. Total madness. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's go ahead. 16. And the glory of the Most High abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Most High was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. Chapter 25, verse 1. And the Most High's power spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. <clears throat> Exodus 25. Now, now, before you go there, I want, I want to bring something out. So according to what we're reading, what is an offering? Real quick, what you were just reading there. What is an offering according to what you just read? But it's something that you bring willingly, you willingly from your heart. Yeah. You're not forced to do it. Exactly. It's, it's not, by it's not a law. law. It's something that you give willingly mm -hmm. outside of what you're, law, you're lawfully obligated to. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I'm showing the difference between an offering mm -hmm. and tithing. Mm -hmm. Like most people now, based on what happened in the Christian church, they mm -hmm. gave everything and they gave it willingly and they realized it was a lie. But then they come to the truth and say, well, listen, I'm not tithing no more. Right? <laughs> you understand? And then they'll look at what happened in the Christian church as their excuse not to tithe. But really, and then they'll say, you're supposed to give from your heart. But that's an offering. That's on top of what the law says you, you, you should give so that the work can prosper and others can benefit. A lot happens with the tithe. And I wanted to bring that out when it comes to offerings. There's a difference between offerings and tithing. Tithing is a law that was that was instituted in Melchizedek before Levi was born, okay? Yes, Santi, go ahead. <coughs> Exodus 25, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is the offering which ye shall take of the gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet, and fine linen and goats here. Brands, skins, dyed red, <coughs> ledgers, skins, and shedding wood. Oil for, for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for 
the sweet incense. Verse 7, I the stones and the stones be in the ephod and in the breastplate, and let them make me a set sanctuary, that I may dwell amongst them, according to all that I showed thee. After the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments, the rug, even so shall you be. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length of the rug, and a cubit, and a half and breadth of the rug, and a cubit and a half the height of the rug. Uh, verse 11. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within, and without shall thou overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about it. Verse 12. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. The two rings shall be in to one side of it, the two rings in, in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staffs of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staffs, the staffs into into the rings by the side of the of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. The staffs shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testament which I shall give thee. Verse 17. And thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubim. Cherubim, yeah. Of gold, of beaten, of beaten work, shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat, and make one cube cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even on the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof, and the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another. Towards the mercy seat shall the pieces of the cherubim be. And thou shalt put the mercy of the seat above, put the mercy seat above, above upon the ark. And in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood, two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay the pure gold, and make therefore the crown of gold round about. And thou shalt make unto the border of an and breath round about, and thou shalt make a golden crown to the border there round about. And thou shalt make and thou shalt make for it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet there. <coughs> Verse twenty seven. Over against the border shall the green be the places of the stage to bear the table. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold, that the table may be born with them. And thou shalt make the, the dishes thereof, and spoons thereof, and covers thereof, and bowls thereof, and bowls thereof, to cover with all. Of pure gold shalt thou make them. And thou shalt set upon the table shoe bread before, before me always. Verse 31. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall the candlestick be, shall be made. His his shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knot, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come of the shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches of the candlestick are on one side. 